Today, um, my name is Lorna Smith. I'm one of the assistant liaison librarians here at Newcastle University. Um, my colleague Louise Cowan is in the background. She'll be um, facilitating a little bit um, with chat. Um, but if you have any questions throughout this session, feel free to put them into chat. Um, if Louise doesn't get it, I'll get it at a point when we pause. Um, so what we're going to do today, it's quite an informal session. Feel free to you know, unmute yourself at any point. You know, if I've gone too fast, just let me know. But if you have any questions at all, please pop them into um, chat. Just as a, a little caveat, I am not an expert in Mendeley, Zotero, um, um, and any other reference management tools. The only one I know a little bit about is EndNote. Um, but if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask and we can maybe find out the answer together or we, I can point you in the right direction. So today's session is basically investigating what other reference management tools are out there um, and what sort of decision making you should, making, should be making when you're deciding if a reference management tool is the right thing for you to use. Um, I'm going to be pointing you in the right direction of how to use Mendeley and Zotero. We won't have time today to go into them. However, I'm going to show you where to find help and support, where to access them, where to download them, um, and sort of and send you on your way, hopefully, to um, using tools that are the right thing for you. Um, you need to be aware that the only um, endnote I'm sorry, the only reference management tool that we support here at the university is EndNote. Um, we have quite a substantial amount of help for that. However, EndNote isn't the right thing for everyone and maybe investigating other tools such as Mendeley and Zotero are the right thing for you. So I'm gonna um, stop sharing just for a second and we're gonna put a little poll and ask you, do you currently use a reference management tool. And you can select multiple if you've used maybe a tool before. Um, I should have put in a, an option as none. Um, if you don't have it, don't, haven't used one before, don't worry, you can just leave it blank. Um, or maybe other, if you've just used maybe a Word document or an Excel sheet, um, might be a good option to do there. Okay, just wait for a couple more. So quite a few of you used EndNote and Mendeley Zotero. And two more, oh, it's just me and you, isn't it? So yes, that's right. So let's, I'm gonna end the poll there. So, share the, my result, the results. So quite a few of you have used EndNote, whether you've used it quite substantially or not, um, or maybe you're contemplating trying something different, which is always um, uh, a possibility. Uh, a couple of you used Mendeley and Zotero before, and a few of you have used others as well. That's great. So it's just to get a good idea for myself uh, for today's session, but that's really good to see. So I'm gonna share my screen again. My slides, right. So why use reference management software? It isn't, um, you know, it might not necessarily be the right thing for everyone. However, so there are some really good um, positives for using a tool such as a reference management tool. You can manage large amounts of information. So particularly useful if you are doing multiple projects, maybe multiple essays, or maybe um, you're doing a dissertation, thesis, it can handle a huge amount of references. Um, you know, also um, hold PDFs and you can make annotations and things. So it can, it can manage it. So basically have put it into an organized fashion for you. It's quicker than citing things manually, especially for big projects such as your dissertation or thesis. Although, you know, back before computers, everybody had to hand write their beautiful references um, manually. But these days you might as well make the use of such tools. 
you can ensure that your referencing is consistent. So if you select a, re uh, a referencing style within these tools, you can ensure that all your references have the same style. Whilst if you do it manually, you have, you know, you have the possibility of sometimes making your references inconsistent. You can switch between referencing styles as and when you need to. So depending on your course, such as say for architecture, you can use multiple referencing styles such as MHRA and Harvard at Newcastle. So depending on what you're doing, you can switch between your referencing styles as and when you need to. You can get citations from the internet and databases, so such as even in Google Scholar, Library Search, and databases such as Scopus, Proquest. There's normally an export citation option where you can get your reference from for that article, book, whatever it is, put into your reference management tool, whether that be EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero, BibTeX, et cetera. You can share, share citation libraries with your peers. So quite a lot of them let you, um, so say if you're maybe a research student and you need to share your bibliography maybe with another student or another researcher or another um, an academic, etc., you can share your reference library with, um, with relative ease. Um, when would you not use a tool? If you're only citing a handful of references, you know, maybe you're um, an undergrad, first year, second year, maybe you're not, you know, dealing with many, many references, then maybe you, you just need to do it manually or in a Word document, etc. You don't have time to learn a new tool. This is a this is a huge one because quite often we will will teach students about reference management tools and maybe they have looming deadlines due in a, a week, a day, and they think, oh, I'll just use a reference management tool. It'll fix all my reference problems. Then is not the time to be doing it. You need time to learn the tool. You need to learn its you know uh, what it can do, what it can't do. It, it takes time. So it, it's something that you need to think about way in advance. So, you know, maybe you are second year, maybe you're going into third year, you're going to be doing your dissertation soon. This is the great time to start investigating these tools, deciding which one is the right one for you. Um, and then, you know, start using it now. And then by the time you start doing your dissertation, you know exactly what to do and how to use it. Um, you aren't technology minded. I get we get this quite a lot um, with students um, who aren't um, very comfortable with using um, tools such as EndNote or um, some of the other reference management tools. Is it going to make your life easier or harder? You know, it, you, you know, just using technology for technology's sake, just because it's there, it might not be the right thing for you. Maybe just using um, a Word document or an Excel sheet or something else. There are other tools out there might be the right thing for you. So having a think about those pros and cons will really help you decide, you know, is this right for me? Which one is right for you, et cetera. So. Which tool should you use? Now, there is no right or wrong answer to this. Look at the problem that you're trying to solve um, um, with which tool it is. So, you know, is it your dissertation? Is it a thesis? Then maybe, you know, if you're a PhD postgrad student, then I would highly recommend using EndNote. If you're an undergrad and you still, you know, you've got if you have quite a few years to go and you want to start using a tool, then maybe I would suggest using Zotero. I'm going to show you a comparison table in a minute, which will help you make that decision. Um, but taking time to explore the tools and what they offer uh, for your needs it will really help you decide which one is the right one. And as I've already said, decide early. Don't and try and use a complex tool um, when you've got you know, looming deadlines, you know, and you're under a lot of pressure. You just don't need the extra stress. Um, learn how to use that tool. As I've said, if you if you start using it with plenty of time, learn how to use the tool, make backups, be aware of the common problems that it has and how to fix them and where to find that help and support that you need as well. This, this next point is goes across. No matter what re re referencing tool you use, understand your referencing style first. 
you know, whether it's Harvard at Newcastle or maybe it's MHRA, MLA, APA 7th, I can go on, there's hundreds of these referencing styles. Understanding your referencing style, you, these tools such as EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero, you know, whatever it is that you're deciding to use, it's what you put in well, what is what you get out. Because quite often students will, well, it's not, it's not outputting the correct style. It's, you know, well, what information did you put in? Do you know what, what because um, quite often students will get their references from databases, from, you know, Google Scholar, and they'll export the citations into the library. It's what, it's computer generated. So it might miss out vital bits of information, such as the URL that you need for, say, for Harvard at Newcastle. You need the URL, you need the access date. It doesn't automatically add those to your reference in the likes of EndNote. So you need to go in and manually add those. You need to make sure that you understand your reference referencing style, what information do you need for that referencing style, have you put everything into your library, into, um, and that way you make sure when you start using your library with um, um, your Word document and you start um, putting in your references in from that, that what you're going to get out, your output, your bibliography is spot on. Um, but also when you've got your bibliography and if you understand your referencing style, you know when you start looking at it, what is wrong? Because you're, you, you know your referencing style and you can start looking at it and you can use the likes of Cite Them Right and any other tools that there are to double check your re references. Don't rely on your reference management tool to get it right because it, it won't depending on what you put into it. Uh, as I've already said, EndNote is our university supported tool. But is it right for you? As I've already said, it, it, it has its um, quirks and it can be a little bit um, troublesome sometimes. Uh, but if you treat it nicely, EndNote is an excellent, powerful tool, which I highly recommend for PGTs and PGR students. Um, yes, right. And our referencing guide, which I'm going to show you as well, which has lots of help and support there. So before we go into Mendeley and Zotero, I'm just gonna um, um, go and share my screen again and go into um, show you. Come down, come down, silly thing. I'm doing this on a tiny little laptop and it doesn't always want to move. Right, so um, on the library homepage, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, under resources and study support, we have our skills guides because referencing is a skill. Um, we have referencing at here. We've got lots of help on how to reference, how to access Cite Them Right online. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, we have our referencing software and tools as well. So. Um, lots of help on your referencing styles. If you need some extra support on understanding your referencing style, go here. These are all the main popular referencing styles that are most commonly used here at Newcastle University. So for example, uh, Chicago, we have some manuals, a little style sheet that you can go and check out and have a look, lots of other help and guides that you can go and explore just so that you understand your referencing style before you go and dive into any um, tools. Cite the Might online as well, you'll see on the left-hand side here is essentially an ebook. If you're not familiar with it, please go and start using it. It has the majority of the referencing styles that we use here at Newcastle University. It doesn't have them all, but it does have the majority. The Harvard at Newcastle style, comes from Cite Them Right. It is one and the same thing. So when you see the Harvard style here, it is um, Harvard at Newcastle. So again, depending on what it is you're referencing with using your reference management tool, make sure you understand your referencing style. Look at this. Okay, this is how an ebook should look. You know, when you've done your final bibliography, this is using the Chicago style, for example. You can go and have a look 
here and make sure everything is in the right place. You've got all the information you need. Um, and you can change this to Harvard, for example, which is Harvard at Newcastle. And you can see, I always use the reference list example to make sure you have all the right information in the right place. The reference management tool will do it to a point, but you just need to double check, as I've already said. So um, that is Harvard at Newcastle. If we go back to our referencing homepage, Make sure I'm doing the right thing. Right. If we go to referencing software and tools, um, on the first little box here, reference management software, we have our comparison table. Can everyone see that okay? Um, just let me know if you can't. Um, so on here, we have Mendeley, Zotero, Enno, Enno Online, and Bibtex. Just made this a bit, no, no, I want to make it a bit bigger. Um, then we have availability and access. Oh, yeah, Louise has just shared the comparison table on the chat if you want to go and have a look for yourself. It tells you what it's compatible with, whether it's web based, file based, desktop, how to access it cost and storage, whether it's, so all of them are free. Um, EndNote particularly is free via our university license, whilst the rest of them are free. So that's another thing to, you know, to think about. You can access EndNote online for free after you leave here. However, EndNote desktop, you can, um, unless you have access to it somewhere else in your employment, your, your access to it will finish after you leave here. Whilst other ones such as um, Zotero, Mendeley, um, and um, yeah, Endo Online and Bibtex, you can access throughout, you know, once you've left here. It's not tied to university email address. Um, so you can carry on using it. It tells you about what storage it has, and you can access more, more storage if you need to, what operating system it works well with any methods for adding the methods for adding citations and bibli bibliographic data you have you can do manual ones you can export from databases so a really useful table that you can use to make informed decisions about which referencing style is the right one for you and what's lovely here is at the end is all the tutorials and support there is that you can go and explore um, to get yourself familiar with it. So I highly recommend using this comparison table to make a decision on which one is the right one for you. So going back, and now we have these little quick guides for each of these main ones. So the reason why we've chosen these, and you know, now because we subscribe to it here at the university, Mendeley, Zotero and Bibtex are the most commonly used reference management tools that are out there the, um, with the most support. They're free to access, um, easy to use. I myself used Zotero when I did my postgraduate um, course. So um, I know that it's easy to use. I have a lot of students tell me they use Mendeley um, and that it's um, quite relatively easy to use and you know they really love it. It's a personal preference. It's, you know, there is no, as I said, no right or wrong answer. So what I recommend is you, oh, it's opening up that, um, is use the comparison table, have a look at which one is the right one for you. And then if you want to explore a bit further, we have these quick start guides on the referencing um, guide. What it, it tells you a bit about what Mendeley is, uh, how it can help you, what it does, um, how does it manage your references, where you can access it, how do you create an account? And sometimes there's little screenshots about how to do it and how you log in, how you get started and where to find help. So as I said, we, we don't support it. So you'll have to go and use the Mendeley um, support help. But I always find with Mendeley and Zotero, literally, if you have any problems, just Google it. And the same goes with EndNote. Any problems you have, Google it. And I will put money on it. Somebody out there has 
put a little um, chat message ticket somewhere online about how to fix that problem. Um, so and that's Mendeley and the same goes for Zotero and Bibtex. There's little quick start guides that you can work your way through. Just have a read, have an explore, just explore, have a go, download, you know, put it onto your web browser, start using it maybe for one assignment, maybe use another one, you know, try trial and error, see which one you like the best. Bibtex for those um, students who are using um, Latex has a little quick start guide that you can go and explore and start using if that's what you're using. So, any questions about that? There's also some reference tools. So, since Site the Right, which I've already talked about, Zotero Bib is a simple referencing tool um, that you can use. Um, online and there's some other free tools as well you can use for helping you reference um Hi, Lorna, we do have a question in the chat um, oh yeah but is it possible to transfer groups of references across all of these software i think we had do we have that in the comparison or oh, maybe not but no. i think you can um mm. that there is ways and means. I would probably Google that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it is possible. Um, you have to normally export your library from one and then import it into another. But yeah, Lorna's right, Google the technique. It, it is possible, but you're probably better off picking one and sticking with it, unless you're thinking of using EndNote while you're at the university and then transferring over to one of the free ones when you're finished. You can definitely do that. Um, I know plenty of people who um, export from EndNote into another um such as Mendeley but um I mean I, I don't know how to do it but because I, I would google it I would probably try and figure it out from online help um but there's definitely ways of doing it so definitely worth exploring um I'm just going to go back to my screen my slides if anybody's got any other questions was that a question I just saw yeah Anna okay. annotation marking function Mendeley is a bit sketchy do you know if it's possible to export the documents including the notes and markings Ooh, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if it does or not. I think we just have to need to Google that one. Yes, uh, as I said, we're not experts in, in Mendeley, I'm afraid. Um, have you tried to export the document and seen if it if it includes the notes and markings? You can always just give it a go. Um, I know you can annotate and mark. Yes, and it didn't include them. Well, yeah, I'd probably say then it probably doesn't. Um, I know an EndNote. I don't know even if an EndNote you can make edits and yeah, you because know, you can annotate an EndNote, and I have no idea if it exports with the annotations. I'm not sure either. It's not something we've ever tried. To no, do. I've never never tried that one before. Um, I would Google that and then. You know, see if there's any fixes that you can keep the annotations. Um, yeah, sorry, can't help you with that one. Um, right, I'm just going to go back to my slides just briefly. So on the slides, the slides are available on our um, uh, SharePoint page, which the, you'll get a link to. Um, Zotero, yes, go and explore Zotero. So help. So we've got the referencing guide, which I've already pointed to you to. There is a Cite Them Right tutorial on Cite Them Right if you need some extra help with you know, figuring out your referencing styles. Um, the Mendeley Quick Start Guide, which is on the referencing guide, there's a link there. And some support guides, there's a link. And same with Zotero and the Bibtex Quick Start Guide. Just things to get you started if you want to go and explore. So EndNote help. We have our EndNote guide and our EndNote helpline. So myself and Louise and some uh, another colleague, Ryan, is on the EndNote helpline. Um, we try our hardest to answer um, the questions that we have, but there is a huge amount of help online. And also Clarivate, which is the company that um, own and look after EndNote, quite often, if we can't answer it, we, we pass on, it, we tell them, Sorry, we tell the students to go and contact Clarivate. They're really, really good at answering questions and um, giving help. So don't get disappointed if you come and see us. 
and we, we pass you on to Clara Bright because they really are the ones who know what they're talking about. Um, teach Yourself EndNote, we also have a Teach Yourself referencing course, which I'll try and put the link on for you. Um, teach Yourself EndNote, if you want to go and explore EndNote a bit more, I highly recommend that you work your way through the Teach Yourself EndNote course. And there's a link there for Cite the Might Online for you to double check your referencing once you have it in your bibliography. There's some extra more help on our academic skills guide. Um, help on um, um, good academic practice, as in referencing, as in avoiding plagiarism, which is what we're, we're all about when it comes to referencing. Um, also, there's some further help on, there's all the links that I've just spoken about in there as well. Um, so, and more help on exams and assessments and dissertation help and support and writing and, you know, all that wonderful, wonderful things. Right. Um, that's us.